Since its assumption to office in 2015, the government has been striving to provide a good life for all Guyanese. This includes providing better care for the elderly, vagrants, the most vulnerable, and persons with disability. It also includes efforts to protect our nation's children and victims of domestic abuse. In this week's edition of Guyana 411, we will explore what the government is doing to improve the lives of the vulnerable groups in Guyana and to provide them with the promised good life. I am your host, Delon Sanko. Please stay tuned. Caring for the elderly can be a challenge. Elderly care takes a variety of forms ranging from personal care such as feeding and dressing, medical attention and counselling. But one of the most important things for the elderly is the ability to maintain some level of independence. And for them, this means being able to make a financial contribution to their upkeeping. Elderly persons are considered as those having reached the age of 60 or 65. Although there are many 60 and 65 years old who are very active and productive members of society. However, at this age, these persons would have already made significant contributions to the country. When the coalition government entered office in May 2015, one of its goals was to increase the pension given to the elderly. Former Minister of Social Protection, Vala Lawrence, says the $13,125 the elderly collected when the coalition took office did not go far away. Lawrence says that in keeping with the promise of providing the good life, her government increased the old age pension to $19,000 monthly. Old age pension we've heard a lot about. In the past 18 months, this government, the APNU AFC government, have improved, increased the old age pension by some 4 to 5 percent. Sir, I wish to state that the incentives that the opposition implemented for the elderly to be exempt from them, from the payment of electricity and water, it lacked transparency and did not benefit all the elderly consumers. The increase in the pension is expected to give back the elderly their dignity. To complement this, the government has also been working to enable the elderly to access their pension with ease through an automated system. The new system will run parallel with the coupon booklet system, where checks and balances will be carried out to ensure the pensioners are receiving their pensions faster. According to the Assistant Chief Probation and Social Service Officer, Ricardo Banwari, the system will be more transparent. It is a system that they will sign on the coupon booklets and access their cash, okay, and they will enter into the, enter into the database, and we will be able to say that, you know, that this pension and cash is our coupon. Added to that, we will be having the agents. There are some agents, for example, persons who are shut-ins. They're the people that um, are not able to go to the post office to uplift their pension. Okay, So we will be able to have in that database the names of the agents who are going to be authorized to uplift the pen on behalf of the pensioner. Some elderly persons require attention and care. Some are placed in homes when there are no family members to take care of them. Geriatric or old folks' homes provide the sort of care these elderly people need. The Palms Geriatric Home, located on Brick Dam, was first called Alms Home and is one of Guyana's longest-serving final homes for many senior citizens. It was built in 1974. Though it was not built for this purpose, the home now serves the needs of elderly, mentally, chronically ill and epileptic citizens along with other elderly people who have nowhere else to go. Administrator of the PAMS, Samantha Douglas, says since the new administration took office, there has been significant improvement in the home. We have a new doctor now, Dr. Laura Pereira. She is here and um, she has been very strategic in working with us. And as a result of that, with all our ideas put together, we were able to have Downstairs, as you can see, we have um, construction work going on, and we're going to build an infirmary, which is going to take care of our residents. It's only in serious or emergency cases, then we would refer them to the Georgian Hospital. But we would have them here. She's on call. That wasn't there before. 
Over the years, much work was done to keep the building standing. Even now, rehabilitation and expansion continue. The former Minister of Social Protection, Walla Lawrence, says that the government will be spending $58 million to renovate the PAMS. There are many persons with disability. Caring for someone with a disability can be tiring both physically and emotionally. But working with persons who are disabled is critical for them to become more independent and involved in the world. Good health, access to education and facilities is important for the persons with disabilities to be engaged in a country. The government is working to provide an equal opportunity for persons with disability to become productive citizens. Providing for persons with various disabilities is important as providing for a normal person. They too want to lead full lives that would be as satisfying as their able-bodied relative, friend and counterpart. To ensure that all Guyanese benefit from a good life and not just a selected few, the former Minister of Social Protection, Volley Lawrence, says the government is working to ensure that persons with disabilities receive the same opportunities to improve their quality of life. We believe that persons with disabilities should receive the same opportunities for improvements to be made to their quality of life as the next person. Sir, the Board of Industrial Training has expanded vocational training of differently abled persons. Some 131 disabled persons have been trained and will graduate in January 2017. The target for 2017 is 200 persons. Chairman for the Guyana Council of Organization for Persons with Disabilities, Leon Walcott, commends the government for making the effort and looks forward for greater collaboration in the future. The Guyana Society for the Blind, which is one of the prominent members of the council, started off a CXC program for blind persons. Uh, we end up having persons with other forms of disability participated. It was a success. We proposed the Ministry of Education, they jumped into it. Well, we don't have problems with the Ministry of Education. They, um, they cooperated fully, and they continue to cooperate. Then we branched out to the Board of Industrial Training, and we didn't have to do much work with them because they understood also. And we're working with them now to set under the TVET, Technical Vocational Education Training, to introduce more subject areas that will benefit persons with disabilities. The Ministry of Social Protection is working in close collaboration with the Ministry of Education in the development of the sign language through the Deaf Association of Guyana. The ministry has also worked with the visually impaired and will continue to do so this year, Minister Lawrence says. In 2016, the ministry has provided assistance to visually impaired individuals sponsoring blind cricketers for a tour in the Caribbean and providing computers for blind students to pursue studies at the university. In 2017, the ministry will continue to work even more to further the cause of our visually impaired persons. The Guyana Persons with Disabilities Act was developed using the United Nations Convention on the Rights of a Persons with Disabilities as its reference document. The act was guided by the principles of the said convention and was passed in Parliament unanimously in December 2009 and subsequently became law in 2010. On November 2, 2010, former President Barry Jagdew assented to the Guyana Persons with Disability Bill, bringing it into law. The government will continue to give its assistance to persons with disability in an effort to provide the good life for all. There are many vagrants across Guyana. They live on the street because of various circumstances. Some are mentally ill. Some have no income, and some are victims of very unfortunate circumstances. Nevertheless, they are citizens of Guyana, and the government has a responsibility to them. In most communities, there are the known vagrants. Many of us pass them in the streets and turn the other way. But the government is looking to ensure that these persons have a clean place to rest their heads at night, where they can come in, out of the dew and cold. The night shelter at Arapaima Street, East La Penitence, was established years ago. It houses most of the homeless in Georgetown. 
Administrator for the Night Shelter, Sheila Virsami, says since former Minister of Social Protection, Vala Lawrence, visited the shelter last year, the conditions have improved. After several months uh, being here, while we were busy providing, uh, upgrading the environment, the conditions of living for the people, ensuring that we clean up the place, we paint it up, we concrete place that were needed to be concrete, uh, refurbish the entire system, uh, the water system and so on, ensure that the people are provided with food that are, are of a high quality. Addressing the medical issue of homeless people is also critical. This vulnerable group comprises persons who have been victims of domestic violence, some were evicted from their homes, many are illiterate, and some are elderly. For many, the daily struggle to find food, shelter, clothing, and safety takes a toll on their health, which in return exacerbates diseases and complicates treatment. Virsami says efforts are on the way to have a nurse working with the home to treat the residents. We are going to have a doctor. Because the Palms has a doctor and we're going to work in partnership with the Palms because Night Shelter and the Palms are sister organizations in the same ministry. So the doctor who's working at the Palm will also be working here. And they will come here and they will be providing any medical attention, what you call general medicine here. And outside of that general medicine, if there is specialized treatment that are necessary or investigation, the doctor will be the one to do a referral and then we will have to follow up as we do presently and we will get them to go and have an x-ray, uh, ultrasound, um, heart test, blood tests and so on, which um, she's working out all that arrangement. These initiatives, among others, are geared towards improving the conditions of the residents at the night shelter. In fact, some of the residents are already seeing improvements in the system at the shelter. Charles Smart, who has been a resident of the shelter for two years, comments the improvements. I don't know how people don't like it, but some people come and get three square meals a day, from time six here, and I don't know how they got the thing balanced, but I like it. I wish if I could stay forever. Since I come here, there's a lot of improvement since Bill Sammy has come here. Because when I came here, here was mud. We didn't have proper food, bed, and those things. And right now, we are better off in here. It is not only the homeless who are receiving such assistance from the government. The less vulnerable are also beneficiaries of the government's promised good life. Assistant Chief Probation and Social Service Officer Ricardo Banuari said public assistance is one of the safety net programs the ministry has. He notes that to date, there are officers in all 10 administrative regions. We have 33 districts in the country and all 33 local border guardians are functioning. Right? Um, we have um, the Poor Law Commission in Georgetown, so that is also functioning. So it's an ongoing process and the thing is, is that um, everyday persons are coming and um, it must be noted that public assistance is not um, necessarily you know you should be getting it all the time right um, our offices are being trained to move a person from where they are so you know <laughs> it is it it it, it as a social workers we're supposed to be changing agents you know you know so the thing is that we have some persons who we are working with other, say, other um, departments and organizations to move those persons from public assistance to self-sufficiency. Public assistance is a lifeline for persons with extremely low income and those who for medical or other reasons are unable to work. The benefits available are based on the level of income for different sized families and in different regions. We partner with um, the Central Recruitment and Manpower Agency, we partner with um, the Board of Industrial Training, you know, <clears throat> we partner with a lot of organizations that could assist us, you know, the Power um, Department, the WOW Department, so it is, it is, it is something ongoing and, and we work assiduously to ensure that all our clients, you know, are being, are given a service that they they, they, they required. It is the aim of the government to provide for all citizens of this country, and that includes providing for the homeless in our society and those who cannot provide for themselves.
Domestic violence exists within all cultures, ethnicities, faiths, age groups, educational level, income levels, and sexual orientation. It can occur between couples who are married, unmarried, lived in rural areas and urban areas, cohabit, or live separately. Furthermore, sexual intimacy is not a requirement to be present in a relationship in order for domestic violence to occur. But not because it is prevalent means that this must be accepted. The Ministry of Social Protection has been concentrating its energies to eradicate the social ill. Because enjoying a good life means a life free from violence. Victims of domestic violence can be women or men. However, the overwhelming majority of cases of domestic violence involve women as victims and men as perpetrators. For this reason, the government and many organizations concerned with domestic violence focus their attention and services specifically on violence against women and their children. Former Minister of Social Protection, Valda Lawrence, notes that a special unit was established in October 2016 to address the high incidence of sexual and domestic violence in our society. The Sexual Offenses and Domestic Violence Policy Unit is a new unit within the ministry expressly created to address the high incidence of sexual and domestic violence in our society. This unit, now well staffed, has entered into discussions with several agencies, namely the Guyana Police Force, regional authorities and NGOs, as well as the Ministry of Public Security to come up with strategies and to collaborate to combat the present prevalence of domestic violence. Domestic abuse often escalates from threats and verbal abuse to violence. While physical injury may be the most obvious danger, the emotional and psychological consequences of domestic abuse are also severe. Perpetrators of domestic violence want to undermine the victim's self-worth or self-esteem and to control the victim's freedom. Many victims of domestic violence are afraid to speak out about their experiences. The Social Protection Ministry will be embarking on a community-based development program for domestic violence victims. Manager of the Sexual and Domestic Violence Unit, Akila Doris, says the program will encourage the victims to speak out. We recognize that community individuals are usually the first responders. Um, as it relates to a lot of social issues within their communities. So we want to be able to equip them with the necessary skills, uh, with the necessary knowledge, with the necessary tools so that they can respond. And we just don't want to equip them, we want to empower them in the process because we would like our communities to take ownership and take a stand against all forms of violence. When forces unite, there are better results. The Social Protection Ministry recognized this and recently signed a protocol to revive the National Task Force for the Prevention of Sexual Violence. Manager of the Sexual and Domestic Violence Unit, Akila Doris, hopes that with the resuscitation of the task force, many persons will join in the fight against domestic violence. But we recognize that we cannot, the work of eradicating all forms of violence, and, and in particular domestic violence and sexual violence. It's a, a huge task that no single entity can perform. So we recognize the need to collaborate with our partners. So we would have embarked on several initiatives to start this relationship going. Um, where we invite our partners to come on board and, and persons who may have a general interest. Also, we have engaged, we have begun the process of engaging our regional officials. We recognize as local government authorities, they too have a role to play. And so we, we want them to be on board with us. For the government to effectively protect and safeguard victims of domestic violence, a safe haven must be provided for the victims. Victims who have stayed in shelters benefit from the group therapy bonding experience and get an opportunity to put their lives back together. The government will be constructing a shelter in Region 4 for victims of domestic violence. Minister Lawrence says other measures will be taken in other regions. There will also be the commissioning of the domestic and sexual violence centers in Region 6 and 10. Additionally, in 2017, Approximately 30 police stations 
in regions 3, 5, 6, and 10, as well as Georgetown and the New Amsterdam prisons will be connected to the integrated crime information system. And 12 police stations across the country will be upgraded, sir, to handle domestic violence interviews, interviewing and case management also. Further, the government will develop community safety plans. Domestic violence continues to be a global issue and needs serious attention. The government is continuing its effort to eradicate this scourge from society. Early childhood development programs plays an important role in the development of children. Recognizing this, the government is committed to strengthening the family structure. The government recognizes the importance for developing children early so that they can become productive citizens. Therefore, plans are underway to expand support systems and programs designed to result in improving the quality of life for children, women and men, former Minister of Social Protection Walter Lawrence says. Under the Child Protection um, Agency, we're going to start several programs one of which is to bring awareness of the issues um, which confronts our children in the home and outside of the home. In the home, we have violence, we have sexual violence, we have bullyism and so on. And in the school system and um, at the other places where they congregate, there is bullyism, um, there is peer pressure, and there is a lot of free time on children's hands where they're not being guided by adults, and so they get into all sorts of trouble. So we want to focus on parenting. It is expected that around 280 parents will benefit from parental training to guide them in parenting their children. Parental responsibilities start soon after the birth and play a significant role and leave an impact on a child's overall life. However, many children are placed in daycare centers where they should benefit from programs necessary for their development. Last year, 13 early childhood development ECD centers around the country were licensed to alleviate whatever fears parents may have knowing that the facility has to adhere to certain standards. Lawrence says that this year, they plan to license more centers. We are focusing on the ECD, the Early Childhood Development Centers, to ensure that those centers meet with the minimum standards as set out by the ministry, and also to help where necessary um, in those communities where we have a lot of parents who are working in the evenings. We're going to help those communities, especially at the CDC level, to establish night care centers so that we can take care of our children. A safe and loving environment where children's physical and emotional needs are met do not always exist in today's society. Due to this, children are often removed from the homes and placed in foster care. Foster care manager, Child Protection Agency, Colleen Khan, says that in Guyana, many persons are not properly informed on the process of foster care. Hence, they are not willing to come forward and be foster parents. Currently, we have just under... 200 children in foster care with about 109 foster parents so that would suggest that there are foster parents who are caring for more than one child um, we we would like to have more children place um, definitely currently we have um, over 600 children um, in children's homes across the country and many of them are eligible for foster care and they range from, you know, birth, from infants, babies to 17, 18 years old. It is important to provide for the well-being of children in foster care by providing a safe, stable and nurturing environment for the child. According to Khan, the Ministry of Social Protection plans to implement a new mentorship program this year to further encourage persons to foster a child. We're also looking at um, having a mentorship program. Um, it's kind of an extension of foster care, but instead of, you know, instead of you bringing the child home to live with you and your family, um, you can dedicate an hour a week or, a few, you know, a few days a month um, to being like this role model in a child's life, um, particularly adolescents. This mentorship program is expected to address children in institutional care and to alleviate the financial responsibility of adoption. 
To this end, the foster care stipend has been increased to $20,000 and efforts are being made to target 250 children in the foster care program. This year, 23 residential care centers and or children's home will be targeted for registrations and license in keeping with the Child Care Services and Development Act 2011. Additionally, the Early Childhood Development Awareness Programs at health centers will sensitize young parents on the importance of children having positive early childhood experiences. The government good life is predicated on happiness. It is about making people happy by assuring them a brighter future for the elderly, persons with disability, victims of domestic violence, as well as children. The government will continue to provide the good life to Guyanese. Thank you for watching Guyana's 411. I'm your host, Delon Sanko, and do join us again next week for another edition of Guyana's 411.